battles don't get much more monstrous than this one, Godzilla versus Godzilla. Now, it's 40 years since Nissan first screwed the GTR badge to a skyline, but it was this generation, the R34, that really captured the petrolhead imagination. A decade on, and the new R35 has getting on for twice the power and even more technology than its seminal predecessor. The skyline name has gone, but does the same spirit connect these two cars? Now, officially, the R34's 2.6-litre straight-six twin-turbocharged engine has 276 brake horsepower, but that's always been a polite fiction. The reason was that at the time it was produced, the Japanese manufacturers had a gentleman's agreement that nobody would make a car with more than that. In reality, it's got at least 330 horsepower as it leaves the factory, and almost all surviving examples will have been tuned to give substantially more. They reckon it'll take at least 450 horsepower without complaint. Now, the GTR had never been intended to travel outside of Japan. Only tiny numbers of the R33 and R34 versions were ever officially exported. But after a starring role in the Gran Turismo PlayStation franchise, this became one of the coolest cars on the planet. And one of the cleverest cars as well. Nissan saw the R34 as being a technological showcase, and it's absolutely laden with kit. Everything from rear wheel steering to a very clever differential, and even this funky display screen, which was the first that I can remember. It was even possible to plug in a laptop and download data. Even 10 years on, the R34 still feels like a very serious bit of kit. The ride's very firm, and the engine has to have at least 3,000 RPM showing before it wakes up. But when the turbos do kick in, it's still seriously quick. Nissan designed the car to make almost anyone feel like a driving god. Normally, most of the engine's output goes to the rear wheels, but when it detects slip, the torque gets diverted to the front wheels to help pull everything straight. And it means you can afford to take some fairly astonishing liberties with the chassis and still get away with it. Now, the greatest achievement of the engineering team responsible for the new GTR has been the fact they've created a car that genuinely makes the R34 feel quite slow. The GTR has got 478 brake horsepower, so as you'd expect, performance is in a different league. Now, this UK spec version does without the launch control of the Japanese car, so it's not going to be able to quite match their 3.5 second 0-60 time. But without a speed limiter, it can do nearly 200 miles an hour. Now, however impressive those figures sound, I promise you that behind the wheel it feels even quicker thanks to the astonishing levels of grip generated by the chassis and also the seamless power delivery of the twin clutch gearbox. The GTR is absolutely packed with technology. In fact, it almost obviously too much choice. It's got different differential settings, different damper settings and different traction control settings. Now, when it's in race mode, it feels a little bit too firm on UK roads, but there's no denying its astonishing pace I have never driven anything that is so easy to drive so quickly. Now, Nissan claims that the GTR is a far more sophisticated car than the Skyline. And it's right. In fact, the GTR is a genuine supercar and one that you could consider against any rival in the world, regardless of cost. But even 10 years on, Let's not forget about the R34, because it's still a genuine hoot to drive hard, and it's also impressively quick as well. One thing's for sure, if Nissan can keep up this rate of progress, then the next GTR is going to be absolutely amazing. <laughs>